when you're serving, you're living out your purpose. And so, like, right. um, being married and being able, like, within a marriage setting, uh, being a mom to Grayson and Caroline, like, you can serve. And so, and when it came to, like, professionally, um, basketball, being able to give back, give back, but being able to work with somebody who, who literally, like, um, I have to help Corinne go to the bathroom, like, you know, like, uh, that a 21-year-old who can't even get themselves dressed, who can't, sh- who can't, who just literally is relying, it has really pushed me spiritually just on how, how uh, fragile life is and how, like, fragile we are, but how strong the human spirit is, mm-hmm. because she, she shows up every day, yeah. um, and, and also just... There isn't just a physical, it's really helped me. It's not just a physical healing that, that Karen is going through, it's spiritual. Putting the work, it all speaks for itself. Grinding and sound, ain't nothing to tell. When we step on the court, we gon' bring it to light. And we stop and pop like we caught it a light. Stop asking what's wrong with me. You already know there's a dog in me. And yeah, there's no stopping my focus, man. Make sure all my people gon' ball with me. Yeah, I came to compete, I'm a dog with it. Yeah, I came to compete with my paws in it. Hey, what's up, CTA family? Welcome back to the Compete Mentality Podcast. The Compete Mentality Podcast exists to motivate, educate, and inspire you to compete in all areas of life. Our definition of competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have, in my opinion, the most special guest we could ever have on this podcast, my wife, Courtney Delps. Courtney, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. It's about time you invited me to be on your podcast. I mean, man, keeps me out of it. So, this is a special podcast for you guys. Uh, This is a uh, very unscripted podcast. We're just going to fire questions at each other, so this could get pretty hairy. Uh, who, who knows? I have no idea what kind of mood my wife's in right now, or what kind of questions she has planned to, to get me, uh, put me in a corner. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> uh, no, this is going to be great, and we're excited to bring this to you. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off first. So it's the first uh, weekend of March, so I believe it's coming out March 3rd. So we're doing this ahead of time. We like to plan ahead. So March 3rd is when this is coming out. Uh, This is literally uh, probably 1A uh, favorite month for me. We have March Madness. Uh, It's your birthday month. It is my birthday month. 34 this year, man. You're getting old. (laughs) Yep. Wow. Yep. I'm um, gonna be 34. That that would be my Paul Pierce year. Yep. Paul Pierce or Shaq. Which way have you? Paul Pierce. So for, for your birthday, I always get you a jersey. That's true. Last year was Larry Bird. Ray Allen. Ray State. Allen. I'm going Ray Allen. Ray Allen for the Bucks. No taking. Ray taken. Allen for the Bucks. No taking. Ray Allen year. Ray Allen for the Bucks. So, uh, but love March. Uh, so I want to ask you a question. Uh, you got to experience the NCAA tournament in March Madness. Uh, what is your favorite March Madness memory for you? Favorite March Madness 2012-2013 back-to-back Big Ten tournament chance. Uh, you get into the Big Ten tournament and you go I and mean, you've been playing against those, those girls and those teams since January at that time. We didn't play in December yet. January, February, you're grinding out and you get into the tournament and you just, you, you either catch fire or you don't. Right. And uh, though we won it back-to-back years, of overtime games, we, it was Back then, Penn State, Michigan State, Nebraska, uh, we were all really good teams battling it out and just some wars. And to go back to back, put some banners up in Mackey, those were definitely anytime you win a championship. Yes. So, and just, I mean, to experience that we went to the ter- NCAA tournament all four years. Yep. So, uh, freshman year, uh, went out to, to UConn um, mm-hmm. against the overall number one seed. Um, as a freshman year playing, I playing against Maya Moore and those, and that was, it was one of those, it was a great experience, um, but one that left a bitter taste in your mouth. Sure. Because um, you didn't want to just feel like, oh, we're just here, we get to play against Maya and right. Yukon. Like, you want to go, you want to go win. Right. So, I'm getting wordy. Oh, back to back Big Ten champions. No, that's great. I, have, I do have a follow up question. Where, yeah. That was your sophomore and junior years? 
Sophomore, junior year. Yep. yep. Where were those? Um, we won at. Where were those played at? Yep, Hoffman Estates in Illinois was one Both? year. Uh, no, it was one year, and one year was at Conceco. Okay. Banker's Life. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. Banker's Life that's right. No, I remember. I'm trying to piece it all back together. It's been. What years were that? Was that? 2012, 2013. 2012, 2013. 10 years ago. 10 and 11 years. 10 ago. year anniversary of the back to back team. So, very cool. Um, I also, fun fact, uh, I believe, went, so you played Hoffman Estates as a junior? Yes. Yes. So, freshman year, you played Hoffman Estates, right? No. No. Where'd you play as a freshman? Banker's Life. Banker's Life. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to remember just a little history from Jordan and Courtney. Uh, I got dumped by you for basketball mm -hmm. one of those years, and then you text me <laughs> on the bus. Uh, that would be, be the NCAA tournament when we went. Okay. Be my, we went and played at Louisville at the, the KFC Yum Center. This I would be the year yes. that Louisville went on that next year. Yes. Beat Brittany Griner. Yes. Jody Schumel hit that behind the ear shot against her yep. in the game. That was when they upset Baylor after. We played Louisville at Louisville. We yes. lost. Yep. Um, very close game, and it was on that bus ride home that yes. I so slid I'm, into, I'm your, trying into your text messages. Yes, my flip phone text messages you slid into uh, after uh, we oh, lost. After Season was over. I could focus. Yes, so uh, that's what I was trying to remember. As you were describing those stories of the back-to-back, -back, those, uh, those nightmares came back of... Uh, <laughs> When uh, getting dumped for basketball, hey, that, that's a uh, part of the story. So, what what you got for me? What I got for you is your favorite. I just want your favorite. I, I didn't know you um, as a player, and when you were, I met you when you were getting into out after you were playing. Yep. So, favorite March Madness playing experience for you? Favorite March Madness playing experience for me. Uh, well, in college at Purdue North Central, uh, I'm not sure we made it out of the first round of the conference tournament. So those were kind of some bitter memories right there. Uh, we played in a, the Chicagoland Athletic Conference, uh, Cardinal Stritch uh, up in Wisconsin, uh, amazing powerhouse that uh, was always tough that we played against, or all that Nazarene. Um, Huge, small college hoops fan right here. Uh, so, uh, but as far as favorite, uh, man, probably going to have to go with, as a coach, uh, winning the national championship with Indiana West. Uh, that, that was incredible. That was an incredible experience. Very spiritual experience. Uh, that really is a whole nother podcast that um, I could go through with, with that group of guys that I'm what, still what made in that, touch with. What made that team so special? Uh, they loved each other. Yeah, Jacob Johnson, Bob Peters, Grant Evans, Johnny Marlin, Josh Mayhor, um, all dudes that I love dearly. Uh, and that's the, the pick up the phone call any of those guys and pick, pick up right where we left off. Um, so uh, there's a bunch of guys that could go, go down the line. The whole team was, was a brotherhood. So um, that was a fun, fun tournament. Getting past Davenport was a huge game uh, in the tournament. Every game was huge, and it was played in Branson, Missouri. That was just a really fun, that was fun March Madness. And in, in, in the NAI, then uh, we had 32 teams all go to one spot. So it was like pandemonium. And it was in like a gym the size of Cameron and Arena. So like it was packed every game from all these like thirty teams, players, families. You know, it, it was unbelievable. Couldn't hear. I mean, it was awesome. Just one of the coolest environments that probably sports the general public never heard about. Uh, unbelievable. I think you got to come to. I was there. You, you, we were married. You got you. You came on the national championship run. Yep. Right out. Mom and dad. So, yeah. Yeah. So what would you say about that experience? Comparing that atmosphere to NCAA tournament? I would compare it, this is no disrespect to yep. them all, <laughs> yeah. I would compare it to, because of the size of the crowds, it's smaller to a Big Ten tournament field, yeah. like yeah. where it's sure. just, everybody's in the same, everybody's in the same spot, um, and you're there, and it's, you lose, you go home, 
Yep. And that's how it is. It's single. I mean, Big Ten term is single elimination. So yep. like, you have to keep winning to keep going, and yep. you're you don't have a long break at those at the national championship for NAIA. Like, you win, you play the next day, or you might get a day off. It's not like you play two games in a like a Friday and a Sunday, yeah. and then you get a whole week. No, like oh, you're there, and you yeah. just kind of keep yeah. cranking them. Yeah. So it, re- it really does <laughs> have the feel, because at the Big Ten tournament, yes. you got to crank them out. Yeah. you got to crank them out. Yeah. And so that that is why it's no disrespect. I'm not downplaying it. That's just the – and that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Like it's it's not stretched out. It's yeah. like you got to you got to get hot for a couple games in a row. Yep. Be for ready sure. to rock and roll. So, I mean, it was awesome. I love – it was – March Madness, it's it here, awesome. it's, cool. it's Among Us, March 3rd, this podcast, it's best time of year. Court, uh, I would love for you to ask you about what you're doing right now. Um, you've had a transition a little bit this year, really because of a calling on your heart. Tell us about that calling and where you're at today. Yep, so in, it was June, um, we, went to, we went down, we are celebrating our uh, wedding anniversary, we went down to Brown County. Um, for those of you guys who know Jordan, he likes to go to bed about 8 p.m., 9 p.m. True. We're, we're on our anniversary trip. He was in bed around uh, that time. And I'm like, I'm going to go out and have a bonfire. We're at a cabin. He's like, I'm going to bed. So I went outside for probably about two or three hours by myself and enjoyed some. It was actually nice. It's quiet time. Had a bonfire by myself. You kept me um, out late the night before. I remember that. And uh, you were doing you karaoke the night before. We won't, go, we won't go there. But you were doing <laughs> karaoke the night before. So you had to go to bed a little early. So we, uh, I was sitting out there and it was just, uh, I'd been working with, those of you guys know, Corinne Henderson. Yep. Um, she first, I first met her and she was in high school as a basketball player. She trained with me. Her, after her freshman year of college, she was hit by an impaired driver uh, while riding her motorcycle and was dead at the scene uh, in a coma for 21 days, hospital 98 days, um, just the uh, sickest person in the hospital, was super sick. and. When it came to like, uh, it was in 2021 that her dad called and said, hey, she needs to get stronger in her core. And I studied health and fitness in, in college. And so I was like, yeah, I, I'll work with her. He said, you guys have that trainer relationship. So I went over, did an eval over. Um, fast forward, she started coming to our barn. She would come, you know, two to three times a week uh, for about an hour, hour and a half. We literally just worked on the core um, from the ground up, started working her arms. And I kept like, her parents kept hinting like, Corinne does not work as hard for anybody else but you. And so I've been hearing this, I've been hearing it for, you know, a year. And so then I went back to Brown County and I was sitting out there, I was like, it's time, like I need to, she was getting to the point, they were driving to, and they're putting like 10,000, I think it was 10,000 miles on their vehicle, like every month or something, like something yeah, great. great. Like they were just driving all over the place, all kinds of different appointments that, to work with Corinne full time. So. Uh, it was in the stillness when we get quiet, we hear spirit, and so that was in June. And so I started talking to her family about it, started talking to people, and, and literally went into it um, just knowing that was a calling. Not we um, had started a not for profit the year prior uh, yep. called the Pete Training Foundation that we had, and it started to make sense. That's why the not profit was started, and so. Um, for somebody like Corinne that has a brain injury, the insurance runs out where yep. she could get 20 PT um, appointments in a year. Yep. And for somebody where she's at that needs a neuroplasticity and needs day after day and, and a routine, that is, people aren't going to get better that way. Like that is not, the system is failing people who have brain injuries and are trying to get better because right. they can't afford to, the care. I mean. You go to the places where they need to go, it's three, four hundred bucks an hour to work with somebody. Right. And so Corinne um, started coming in August and we fundraise everything for it through our foundation yep. to to help. And I mean, you know you're doing there, there was months when we first started, I'll be like, people know this, that I wasn't getting we weren't getting paid as a family. Right. And you know, we had conversations, but like God has always been faithful and I, I got an experience like people said, you know you're doing something you love when you do it for free. Yep. And so if you can imagine working a full-time job and not getting paid, you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's and it. so um, the progress uh, that, that, that Corinne has, has made just in the course of from August until now has been we just met with somebody, uh, had lunch with them who hadn't seen her in a couple months and like they had tears in their eyes and uh, it's just consistency and that's what yep. we've reached in, um, in our training. Like 
It's not this a big aha moment. You have to show up every single day and keep putting wow. the work, and then you get the results. Wow. So, yep. so that's a little bit. So yeah. uh, there's a whole. And I want to put in a sh yeah. shameless plug right there. Um, for those of you watching the podcast, we have these Mason Gillis jerseys up front here that we are doing a fundraiser. If you want to support people like Corinne and their and her family, uh, we're doing a fundraiser where you can get a Mason Gillis signed jersey in March Madness. You Boilermaker fans, you can get it for I believe one hundred seventy five dollars mm -hmm. on our website, yep. which is compete training foundation dot org. Yep. Or you can get to the foundation through our website as well, compete training academy dot org. But wanted to give you guys the opportunity to support what Courtney's doing to support Corinne and her family through this fundraiser through a Mason Gillis autographed jersey. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's all good. So, uh, what else you want to give me some plug? I'll ask me questions about what I do with Corinne. I guess. So yes. So um, what's a day to day look like with Corinne? Yeah, so Corinne, um, here in the, the winter time, so she gets here at 10, gives her a little extra half hour, and when it's warm out, we do 9.30, but weather changes, somebody with the, that has a traumatic brain injury, sometimes they don't get a lot of sleep, they're still disrupted in their sleep, and so just making sure she gets good rest. So her, she comes, shows up at 10 o'clock every day, and uh, so three um, times a week, this is a new thing, we've been going to a chiropractor um, down in Carmel, so we actually travel to Carmel, we, Corinne gets adjusted down there by a chiropractor. Um, her cervical, so her cervical spine is just like it's supposed to have like some gaps in it, and it is just like just compacted together. And so um, we're on this very um, kind of a advanced uh, system with the chiropractor three times a week right now, which will go down to two times a week for six weeks, and they'll kind of reevaluate. But she goes there three times a week. We we get some some lunch, we come back home, and. When she first started coming here, we she was in a wheelchair. We were in a stand up walker. We used an e pacer and walked, and like we ditched all that stuff. Yep. So we legit do down and backs in the gym, mm -hmm. uh, where I'm on one side of her, and she's walking, and we'll do that for 30 minutes to an hour. Just really focused on good posture, focused on good steps. Um, we use a power plate. We have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. She gets in every day. Her right arm hasn't completely woke up yet, so we do a lot of work on her right arm of just. Um, movement stuff of just getting that thing yep. th through all kinds of ranges of motion and we work her core she eats lunch uh we'll do some we'll read some of the bible we'll read a book um uh, whatever we'll do some mindset training and then um she goes home and we can do it again all again the, the next couple days so that's like a monday wednesday friday a tuesday thursday she's here right at 10 o'clock then she does cranial sacral therapy which is really works in an energy system of your body and so she gets goes with that twice a week um, on top of power plate hyperbaric oxygen chamber uh, at her house they have a red light therapy bed they're using yep. with her and so we're I mean really just being aggressive on on uh, for everything yes. from nutrition to sleep to mindset to physical so if you think about I mean really I tell people she trains like a professional athlete right. I mean 100% when she everything is is mapped yeah, yeah, yeah. out it's yep. planned it's we, somebody who has a TBI thrives under having routine, yeah. and so we just we have we push, we have a great time. Um, yeah. it's it's it, inspiring to be around her every day. It's been unbelievable as uh, I'll brag on you as your husband to see you both uh, in the journey that you guys have been on together grow. Uh, not only her physically and mentally. Uh, your guys' relationship together is cracks me up. You guys are like sisters. Um, and also just, uh, it's amazing to see like God in this. Mm -hmm. um, just to see God moving uh, in her life and healing her day by day. Uh, I'm curious, what has working with Corinne done for your faith specifically? Hmm. It's been... Uh... A pivotal point in in my life where um, being a a high level college athlete, then you um, you know you go through like every player that retires, you go through this like identity thing. Everybody goes through it, and then so like finding talk about like finding your purpose, and I, and like for me, it's 
when you're serving, you're living out your purpose. And so, like, right. um, being married and being able, like, within a marriage setting, uh, being a mom to Grayson and Caroline, like, you can serve. And so, and when it came to, like, professionally, um, basketball, being able to give, give back, but being able to work with somebody who, who literally, like, um, I have to help Corinne go to the bathroom, like, you know, like, uh, that a 21-year-old who can't even get themselves dressed, who can't, sh- who can't, who just literally is relying, it has really pushed me spiritually just on how, how uh, fragile life is and how, like, fragile we are, but how strong the human spirit is, mm-hmm. because she, she shows up every day, yeah. um, and, and also just, there isn't just a physical, it's really helped me, it's not just a physical healing that, that Corinne is going through, it's spiritual, like, there is a complete spiritual healing, and so it just has given, um, for me, I mean, in fact, for me, spiritually, of just growing faith and trust, and, um, resources just uh we start working in just like the the different people in neuro hope and uh mindy right. ewing doing the yeah. cranial the walking out to the the mailbox uh, when it's like man uh, you know where's funding you to come to fund some of the stuff and you open up and there's a check right there right. that when you use out of nowhere like those also the spiritual like god is Always has an eye on us, not a sparrow. Down to the little last yep. details. Yep. So walking by faith, not by sight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, curious. And we're gonna, that's so uh, CTA family. If you want to check out more about Corinne's story, we have YouTube videos. Um, go to our YouTube channel. Go to our website uh, as well, where you can get to those videos uh, about Corinne and Courtney and their story, and check it out there. That that we could talk the rest of the time about Corinne and the amazing job that her and Courtney are doing together. Uh, but go check it out there. Courtney, I want to kind of transition here uh, to your personal uh, walk with the Lord. Um, just tell us about, so we're big on mindset training here at the P-Train Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that the mind, body, and spirit are all connected. Um, tell our audience right now, just the practical habits that you do on a daily basis to take care of your mind, body, and spirit. Mm-hmm. One thing uh, that I have implemented here in 2023, I'm always, uh, I've always been like this, is just like trying to to find ways to elevate, whether it's as Hooper, as a mom, as a wife, you know, like, and spiritually just keep elevating and, and growing. And I think that that's our calling is that, you know, as a Christian is to, in our life is to mature, become more like Christ. And so, uh, daily habits is just the the word is alive and, and sharper than a two double you know have double edged sword and so being in scripture there were times where you can get, I, I'm a big reader and like I'd be I would be reading Christian books but and like reading a little bit but like literally just setting and dwelling on God's word has been um, it's an amazing practice just it says in, in Psalm like to meditate on His word like read God's word that's very practical. Um, and then another thing that, um, the new thing in 2023, so like as a, as a, for those of you guys who are parents or moms, uh, or you're busy and it's like, for me, exercise is a way that draws me closer to the Lord. And so, uh, I love to lift, um, lifting sometimes takes, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Sometimes I don't have 30, 40 minutes and time span to get done. So I, I've been doing what's called the mental mile. Um, and this is true. Uh, not a lot of people know you know about this, but the mental mile. So, since January first, every single day I run a mile, I, and I try to run it outside. So, snow, rain, wind, I'm putting, you know, and I'm just going, and it's on those uh, miles. I call it the mental mile, but it's a spiritual experience of just you got to show up, you got to do it, you got to push through it. And it's in those those moments of just you get you know clear minded, you got serotonin, you got stuff, hormones, positive. <laughs> pumping out at you and so and it takes no matter i mean whatever fitness level you're at for when i was in my prime i could run like a 545 but now it takes me less than 10 minutes now (laughs) i'm working to get down but less than 10 minutes to do to run a mile and everybody has 10 minutes yeah you got 20 minutes you're gonna walk it and so a spirit it's mental mile it could be a spiritual mile like just get out in nature getting outside and it experience you experience 365 mental miles for you this year huh? yeah yeah we're going for it so no, i can attest she's done it every single day yeah. 
Today's March 3rd. She's dark. Done. I've been done it and ran outside. Dark. That, I run a little bit faster. I'm thinking coyotes might be coming after me. So <laughs> we live out in the country. I've, I had some PRs in the dark yep. for sure. But, it's dark. It's cold. Yeah. It's rainy. It's snowing. Yeah. She's done it. She's put a ski mask on and done it. I, I've seen her do it. Yeah, but then it's another one. Um, this is if uh, any college age kids or anybody's listening is the and even parents and entrepreneurs taking a Sabbath. Mm. I, I my body I get out when I when I just keep push and push and push and push and push. I get completely uh, out of whack. Um, mm-hmm. And so God has designed us like we need rest. And so taking a day just to focus on him and just to to have a Sabbath where we focus on the Lord has been has been one that practical habit. Absolutely, that's great. And I think as believers, we gotta work from a place of rest. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we gotta find those uh, daily habits and daily rituals that will uh, give us the re- the daily rest we need too. So not just you know your sleep at night, but the the journaling, the meditation, the reading, um, eating right. All those things help you work from a place of rest feeling good so uh no those are those are great habits you want to you got you got one for me now i do so flip it back you have been doing a lot of uh mindset coaching working with people what is it uh why why do people need it why are you passionate about it um tell us tell the audience a little more uh, for sure so we do more than just basketball absolutely so that is really the mindset training, what I call dream season, is where I'm spending probably 75, 80% of my time now. And this is for players, this is for coaches, this is for people across all industry. Um, this is for anyone. Um, people ask what it is. This is a program and a curriculum that I've developed that helps people realize their purpose and maximize their potential. Um, this is centered around biblical teaching and the science of the mind. So helping a person uncover what they actually are, when they like realize the power that they have and possess, it's it's the most rewarding thing for me to see them just take off and live in their God-given purpose and live in their God-given passions. Um, this, is a, this is a program that uh, you can do for one month, three months, or six months. Um, we also have a staff. Uh, Courtney, you do mindset training. Uh, we have uh, Evan Maxwell, who's one of our mindset coaches, and Spencer Ballinger, who's one of our mindset coaches as well. So we have a staff that's servicing our clients uh, through mindset coaching. And uh, tr- truly, as we got into this, my business coach encouraged me. We obviously started out as just a basketball training facility. Some basketball training business and he said you know what you're really limiting your impact and when he said that that really got me fired up because i don't want to limit my impact here on this earth and he said you really need to do your coaching for all people and i'm like what are you talking about i'm like i'm a basketball trainer like and he goes no like he's like what you do cta is a ministry so what you do the same principles that you teach on the court to help players elevate their mindset and their soul set, you can do that in other industries. And I have done that with CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. I've done that for professional basketball players. I have done that for financial executives, for financial advisors, for farmers, for uh, people of all different types of background now. And it's been a very rewarding journey of uh, being a mindset coach, spiritual advisor to these types of people. And I've seen people reach their goals in six months, uh, their yearly goals in six months. I've seen people set record sales in their, in their business. Um, I, I've just seen God work. Um, and I think that's the X factor uh, <laughs> is just the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit. That's our definition of competing, doing what God calls you to do even when it's hard. Follow, that's following the Holy Spirit. And I think that's something that uh, I'm extremely passionate about and is detailed in dream season to help people understand 
how do I follow the Holy Spirit? How do I tap in to the power of the Holy Spirit? We have it here for you. So you've had a, a lot of clients who have succeeded. Yep. Have you had any clients who have not done well in dream season and why? So that somebody we're going to start, this is advice you give to them that if you're going to start something like this, this is how yep. the mindset you need to go be in going into it. You know what? Most of my clients, like, I always say when you start, I'll give you all your money back if this is something you Have you ever given anybody all their money back? I have. Why? Because they don't, they're not willing to work on their mind, body, and spirit. So once you realize that there's three planes to your existence, that you have a mental plane, a spiritual plane, and a physical plane, and if you don't take care of one of those, it's going to throw all of them off. That's what really gets you into trouble. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to wrap this up here. Thank you for uh, being with us today on the Compete Mentality Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this special time with the best, the, best, having me on. the best guest I could have had, uh, my wife, Courtney Dubs. Always remember that competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard.